Hello and welcome to Captain Bob. Today we're going to be learning about all these crazy inputs and outputs in MobiFlight. So we're in a blank configuration of MobiFlight. In under my MobiFlight modules here, I have just a few switches and an LED connected. These are just so that I can open the t input type wizard um, over here. So we're going to first start out with input types. Input types over here. If we make a new row, test and click the edit button, we'll see under input, we have our Arduino, our button. This is why I flash the button to the Arduino, because you have to have it flashed to do anything. We have action types. So there are all of these crazy things. These are a little bit intimidating if you don't know what they are at first. So let's start at the very beginning, a very good place to start, with none. None, I think, is a little underrated, honestly. None can be used a lot if you want to have something happen on one side, but not when you release it. So if you want something, maybe every time you press a button, it increases one, or every time you press a button, another button, it decreases, like an up button and a down button. But if you have <laughs> just an on press and on release, to, um, it won't do anything, because it'll be like plus one, minus one. So you could have it on press, do something, I don't know, and then on release, do nothing. So you can see that this is really powerful to have the option to have nothing happen. The next input action is Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 events. If we go to Moby Flight's Hub Hop right here, it gets this website right here. Hub Hop and just go to the preset list. This is where you can find all of the events. So under here, uh, you can search for anything you want. This is a lot easier than going through all of these menus right here, I don't know, and then looking for whatever you need. You can just search, say I want parking brake. Oh, right here, Microsoft generic controls parking brake uh, toggle. That's great. So now we can uh, have this toggle event and now you can see right here, Microsoft generic controls input um, and the date added. So all of this information right here, you can press into here, right here. So it's group Microsoft and you can, I like always just click M on my keyboard and it jumps right down in the list to that place. Microsoft generic controls, um, it is an input. And now we just select parking brake. And look at that, we have parking brakes toggle right here. This is awesome. Look at that. This is fantastic. Uh, we can have our own Microsoft Flight Simulator event, and there are tons of events. Uh, if you look through the list, there's ones for specific airplanes, like the Fly-By-Wire A320, the Asobo TMB, TBM. <laughs> uh, there's stuff for like the 172, all sorts of planes here, and all of the generic ones over here work for all airplanes, which is really helpful. I like to really stick to the generic ones, like generic slash controls, because those usually work for all aircraft. But if you need something more specific to an aircraft, going under like flyby-wire A320, you can really get like MCDU events, which I don't even know what would what it, even that is. Ah, I know that is. Never mind, false alarm. You're all gonna yell at me. This is super helpful. Um, events right here, super powerful, but something that's a lot more powerful, I would say, is custom input. You can just copy your code over here, right from this code place, or press this little copy button. Ooh, look at that. And then just paste it over here. And look at that. It will do the exact same thing as the input. Uh, event right here, but this is code so you can do all sorts of crazy things with it using reverse polar notation. RPN, uh, reverse polar notation, is a scripting language and I'll leave some resources to that in the description below. I've done a little bit with it, um, it like on my own time, but it's it's a little it's a little bit of a learning curve to like figure out the scripting language be behind it. So this is, these two are only for Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. So don't even think about using them with like FSX. But MobiFlight variable is the next one. 
This is for everything. This it doesn't matter what this is. Variables are across Moby Flight, so they're through everything with Moby Flight. It's really cool because you can call up a variable and use it later. So let's say we have a variable my var, or you can name it whatever you want. Um, let's say we could have it read the position of a potentiometer. And you could set this value manually, say like, okay, we want the value to be 75. And whenever you call up this variable, it'll put in a 75 in the place of pot position. And you can just update it in one place, 80. Or you can have it an and, and this is super cool for potentiometers. It will read the current position. Um, so if we hook this up to a potentiometer, you could have this variable set to the position of the potentiometer, which is really cool. That is what I usually use it for um, if I'm t playing around with um, potentiometers. But it's really powerful. You can have a number, so anything like A92949411116, or you can have a string like Moby Flight Rocks, and ignore the spelling. I, I'm getting there. The next thing we have is Moby Flight Retrigger Switches. So Moby Flight Retrigger Switches, a lot of people think like, what is this? I'm not going to ever use this. But uh, it's really helpful because say we have this landing light panel, um, this switch panel here, we have some of the switches in the up position, some of them in the down position. And then we load into our flight and uh, in, the, in our airplane, probably all of the switches will be in the down position. but here, one of the switches is in the up position. So like, what's that all about? So with this, whenever you press this retrigger button, all of the switches and events retrigger throughout your simulator. So it syncs up your cockpit to your flight simulator. So basically, if you have the taxi light switch up, and your um, flight simulator switch is down, when you press the retrigger button, um, the taxi light goes to the up position like it is in your home cockpit. So this is really helpful. Um, you could have it something like this. And I'm trying to find out a way that it can do it automatically on the start of your flight. Um, but we're still getting there, I guess. I'm, I still need to research that. FSUIPC offset. This is the next event. This is the one I use all the time in my videos. Every video, um, except for the like more recent ones, is using FSUIPC. FSU IPC offsets are really helpful. They're basically a list of offset things, basically codes you get from um, this one document and you put in here, fill this all out. And then once you do that, everything is good to go and it works with your simulator. A lot of times people are like, where the heck do I find these? This is crazy. So I'm gonna show you that right now. The first one for FSX, you can find this under your FSX folder, wherever that is. It's probably in like a program folders file, and then Steam, Steam Apps, Common, if it's for, through Steam, or if it's like on a disk, it's probably through a different, a little bit different of a folder. But program files, FSX, modules, FSUIPC documents. So that's where you find it. Then it's this FSUIPC4 offset status PDF. So this is awesome. Wow and it has a lot of these codes you can deal with super random things like uh number of flap positions not including flaps full up so this you read it and it spits out a number like three for the cessna because there are three positions not including the top position super cool a lot of crazy stuff Roll velocity. So this is really handy if you are using Microsoft Flight Simulator and you want to like have motion control, stuff like that. A lot of these ones, I would probably say that FSU IPC is a lot more limiting than um, HubHop. So HubHop, if we go back to it, if we look up like roll, um, velocity we can have like all of these rotational velocities and stuff and they're just pages and pages of this and there's one specific to um, airplanes but with FSU IPC I feel like um, there's less options so if you want more options and you're on Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 and you want it more simple I'd probably use the events side of things but um, FSU IPC usually 
that are more similar with each simulator. So if you're an X-plane, here's the path. It's uh, Steam Apps. OK, here's the path, Program Files, your X-plane folder, Resources, Plugins, XPUIPC. And this is where you'd um, install the file. I have the installation to all of the XPUIPCs and FSUIPCs in the link in the description below. It's the like third episode of the Moby Flight Crash Course. Or is it the second? Crazy. But that's awesome. Um, these are just a bunch of basically codes you use. And the last one is Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. You find the offset list under wherever you installed FSU IPC7. It's this offset status V0.19 ODS. Crazy stuff. So this is awesome. I searched up landing light using Control F. I found landing lights right here, and I can just copy this right here, paste it into the offset field, copy this size in bytes of one, put that in for here. And then right here, we don't need any masking for this particular one, so we're going to leave all of the bytes on. And uh, it's not in BCD. So we'll talk about those later. Um, and then this one, we would just set it, if we wanted it on, we would set it to one. And if we wanted it off, we would set it, copy all the settings. So it's a little tedious. Do, 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 do. Copy this, size and bytes one, and set value to zero. So now, whenever we click the switch on, it's one. Whenever we click the switch off, it's zero. And this is also helpful if you use like a transponder thing. You could say uh, we want it to increase by one. So dollar sign is like an X value plus one increase it by one, dollar sign minus one, decrease it by one. So that's just like a way that whenever you press the button, it increases by one. Whenever you release the button, it decreases by one. This would be more useful for a rotary encoder <laughs> because you're just like, you're doing the thing I told you not to where you're um, pressing it and it adds one, releasing it and it subtracts one. So yeah, it's okay. But yeah, so now we have our landing lights working, but uh, what's this whole mask thing about? So I'm gonna tell you about that. If we have lights, um, this is the most popular one where you need masking. Ah, here it is, offset zero delta zero Charlie. If we copy this and paste it, uh, we'll get that. Size and bytes is two, and we need masking for this. So. This is a little crazy. You're like, what? what? What's happening? So like, there's this. We have our offset code, our size in bytes, but then zero is like on and off, and like, what the heck is happening? Like, usually, if you say zero is on, or usually you say one is on, zero is off, but now it's saying zero is navigation, one is beacon, two is landing. So what's what's going on with that? But this is actually shoving you a lot of data, and then you have to kind of decipher it. Ooh. So basically, mask value, you click these little dots right here, and then it gives you this mask, this bit mask editor. So now, for navigation lights, you would want to press clear all, clear all, and you only want the navigation light. So navigation light is zero. Great. That's fantastic. Click OK. And now it's only clicking this one navigation light, which is awesome. So this controls, you could have like zero and one, wherever, zero and one for the navigation light. But if you want the beacon light, you do the same thing. You can clear all and then just select the beacon light. And that's awesome. But the cool thing is you could also just have only the navigation and beacon through one switch. So flick only the navigation and beacon on which is pretty cool. You can do the same with like taxi, strobes, wing, logo, and cabin. And the reason it's size and bytes two instead of one is because there are a lot of these. So it uses nine um, little bytes. So it needs two bytes, bits, bytes, bit, yes. OK, so that's about it. There's also BCD mode. BCD 
is an older type of data, I believe. It like, I think it's like a smaller size or something, but it basically is a format of data. So if we want COM2 frequency given four digits, we could use um, this offset right here, size and bytes two, and it would spit out a kind of nasty number. It would spit out like, I think, Last time I tried it, it spit out like 4,368 for 122 decimal seven or something. It's kind of awful. Basically, you need to do a conversion to BCD. So if you're reading something in BCD format and it'll tell you BCD, or I think it says somewhere up here, it's Bacon Canadian Dentist. Ah, binary coded decimal. Okay, we got that. It stands for binary coded decimal, and you just select that if your thing says BCD. So that's what BCD mode is. I thought it was some crazy like disco mode. No, it's not. But it is helpful if you have something in BCD mode and you need to convert it to normal mode. So that's great. And next, let's go through event IDs. So uh, just like in our FSUIPC folder, there's also an event ID get out of here stop that there we go there's also an event ID list usually so where is that it would be I swear I'm, I'm good at this ah it's this one the 2016 lift of FSX and prepared controls so this is the offset status um, the event ID list so uh, we basically have a bunch of crazy codes that do crazy stuff right here. This is almost like the hub hop stuff with all of this. Basically, like you have so much stuff. This is only events. So there's no inputs you can actually get. But it's super helpful, especially if there aren't the FSU IPC things because there are some switches that aren't in FSU IPC that are in these event IDs. So say we want to have I don't know, pause on and off. We can use code 65794 right here. Ooh, oh, I forgot. Yeah, 65794 and pause on. We can use this code um, and it's 659795. Yeah, it's, it's right here on the screen. This parameter, I believe, is like a plus one or a minus one. I haven't really found a need for parameters, I believe. Um, I haven't looked too much into this, but you could set like gear to, um, I believe one or down, one for up and zero for down, I believe, something like that. So you can use this parameter to change the values, similar a little bit to the FSU IPC offset set value, um, but this is a little more restrictive. You can't go like dollar sign plus one, or I guess you can, but it's, but it's really for like setting values. So it doesn't like, it's a little trickier. So this parameter, um, I haven't really used as much. Usually I think it's just set to zero. And I think that's almost always the case. So yeah, so you have all of these crazy stuff over here. And you can also just select them from the dropout, and you can even type to get um, to get somewhere, and then just uh, scroll down with your arrow keys until you find one. It's a little bit of a fun fun interface, but you can go up and down if you want to, or just select it from the list like a normal person. But the keyboard makes you feel like you're su you're a superpower man. So that's event IDs. They're pretty similar to these Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 events. Um, and then now we have PMDG event IDs. These are basically the same, but uh, they also have a mouse parameter. I'm just putting a normal, a random number so it doesn't freak me out. But you can also have like, if you have the mouse wheel up, then it'll do something, I believe. So this is a little more crazy. Ah, you can, I believe, like, tell the mouse it's doing something, and then that'll, like, have different 
parts of it work. So you can choose things for 737, 777, or 747. There's a ton of stuff in here. Like, wowee. Sheesh. So this is great if you're with PMDG. I'm not, so I've never used it. But it's very similar to this event ID. Or at least I think it is. FSUIP GHEL events um, is, I haven't used these very often. So these ones, there's just a few of them for function. So you can change like aft cabin temperature, forward cabin temperature, cockpit temperature, um, and just a few knobs. I haven't really found a use for them, really. Um, maybe if you're building like a 737 or something, you'd find a little bit of use for them. They're more airliners, but I really haven't found like a solid concrete use for them, so I basically ignore them. Trimio threshold, this might be something fun. So I really, I've kind of stayed away from these G-heck, <laughs> G-heck events. We're gonna say those so we don't get demonetized. So that's the last of the FSU IPC events. So next up, we have the last few of them, Lua Macro. So this one, I actually lied to you, that's not the last FSU IPC event. The last one is the Lua Macro. I believe you can just call these up. Um, Seahorse 276, ready for takeoff. Uh, Seahorse 276. Very nice. Oh, I'm, I'm getting distracted. I've never actually seen someone using these Lua macros, now that I think about it. Alright, next up we have keyboard input. This is my favorite for X-Plane because you can just set something whenever you press a button or you flick a switch you can press it to a keyboard command so now i can just press control shift i don't know u on my keyboard that probably is a weird already used keyboard shortcut but if i press control shift u um i can set it so that x-plane reads control shift u and like flicks the landing light switch up I can also do it so that whenever I flick my switch up, Moe Flight basically emulates a keyboard and presses Control Shift U, which the flight simulator later reads as Control Shift U and turns on the landing light. So it's a really awesome way to kind of get around it instead of having to do all the sorts of crazy stuff to like get everything to work. So that's really my favorite thing. Um, to use with X-Plane because I can just assign it to a keyboard shortcut and it's like it's a keyboard All right now VJoy virtual joystick. I Believe you have to Enable this so that is super great VJoy I believe you can make your own virtual joysticks and connect them basically to a potentiometer. I think this kind of Broke in movie flight maybe a little bit over one of the latest Microsoft flight simulator releases um, but in the future I think um, it'll let you basically connect a potentiometer to a joystick maybe I'm not quite sure I haven't this is another thing I haven't used um, just because a lot of these I think most people will only ever use Microsoft Flight Simulator events ev um, offsets and event IDs and maybe keyboard input I think those are the top four people will use pro users will probably use variables and people with full home cockpits will use retrigger switches but um, G um, but these events but I think like G hack events <laughs> Lua macros and the virtual joystick are a little like less used cases but they're still really nice if you need them virtual joystick I think at this point um, since you're doing everything through Moby Flight, you can configure it using my potentiometer video, and you can just go through Moby Flight, so you don't really need a virtual joystick. But you can also, I believe, like, you might be able to click it to buttons and stuff like that. 
So those are all of the inputs. Woohoo! Let's go over to the outputs. They're the exact same. They're just used a little bit differently. Test. So if we go over to output, we see SimConnect. This is Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. And you basically have the same list right here, very similar. So you have Microsoft Generic Radio. Then we can use, say, Com Receive. Oh, let's see. We could use like Microsoft generic, um, ah, avionics. We could use Microsoft slash generic slash avionics right here. And then we can have like the com active frequency for selecting. And then you can select the index. So like, do I want com one or com two? I want com one in this case. So I can use that. It spits out a value in kilohertz, which is the thing I want and then you can go from there. You can also activate the transform field. Say we want to have everything always off by 14. We can do that. We have that the power to do that. Deactivate it because we don't actually want that and you're good to go. The next one is movie flight variable. If you just want to read something and have it um, have it display the variable on like a seven segment display or something, you can just pull um, call up a variable. So what was our variable over here? It was like chicken nugget or something. Um, let's see. Ah, we cleared it. But say we have a variable um, and we say we could, let's call it something chicken little. We have our chicken little variable that's set to 42, which is the um, answer to the world. Then we go over here and we can read our variable chicken little and it auto fills which is super awesome that's a new feature I I've never seen it auto fill so that is really awesome it calls your variable chicken little and then it just basically outputs that so the last one is FSU IPC offset it's the same thing as the inputs so we can actually even use a preset if we want to I forgot about that cockpit landing lights press use and there we go we can read the cockpit landing lights state fantastic those are all of the Moby flight types hopefully this video helped and make sure to watch future videos of the Moby flight crash course have a good one